you watch 100 mile drive and behind me is a 2023 Mazda MX-5 Miata RF GT and I have four biggest questions for this car. Number one, I am 6'2", slightly over 200 pounds. Can I comfortably fit in this car? Do I have enough room for my head and my legs? And number two, how does this car feel driving it on imperfected roads in the city? Is it firm, bumpy and crushy or is it comfortable? And number three, is this car a good freeway cruiser? Can I take it from LA to San Francisco and enjoy a long trip? And number four, what is so special about driving Mazda MX-5 on the twister road? And if you watch 100 Mile Drive for the first time, well, this is the channel where I say, before you buy a car like this or any other car, you need to rent it for at least a day from places like Turo and drive it for at least 50 to 100 miles on City Streets Highway and twister roads to be able to answer the biggest question I'm answering on this channel, how does it feel to drive? And by the way, in case if you're curious about this car, I'll leave a link in the description uh, for the Turo profile. And a quick walk around this 2023 Mazda MX-5. This is a beautiful color, Zircon Sand Metallic. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Now, by the way, if you are curious, these are 205 R17, very comfortable tires for this car. And again, this is a GT model, so it's designed more for comfort. Definitely like this car, and I definitely love the hard top on this car. It looks beautiful even from the rear. Now, I just left this open so I can show you quickly inside is my backpack. There's not much room in here, but certainly you can put your groceries. All right, let me roll the roof down and I can show you what it looks like open. Now look at this gorgeous beauty. This car is like a toy, honestly. So beautiful. Just wanted to show it to you. And now a quick door sound check. Sounds okay. It's not heavy, not light, somewhere in between. All right, let me get on the inside and talk about interior quality real quick. Coming on the inside, closing the door. Now overall, this quality is not bad. It's not a luxury car by no means. Like if you see here, this piece moves a little bit. It's plastic. It's okay, you know, but it's not a high-end quality. This is like a fake leather material, I guess, with some stitching. This plastic does leave marks. I uh, may not be able to see that, but overall it's okay molded. I love the steering wheel. The steering wheel is so nice. It's like a toy, seriously. And overall, everything is nicely molded. This is a centerpiece. These are some hard plastics, uh, but nothing cracks. I mean, this car has around 6,000 miles. The only issue I see with some seats, uh, you can see some marks here. Hopefully you can see them here. So, I mean, for brand new car, I wouldn't expect that. But other than that, I'm pretty pleased. Uh, like I said, it's not a luxury car, but overall is everything is nicely molded. So quality is okay. All right, and this is what it looks like me getting into Mazda Miata. All right. It's actually not bad. It's a low car, but this is not bad. And now me getting out. This is a slightly more difficult, but still doable. All right. All right, and this is what it looks like me sitting in the Mazda MX-5 Miata. I can sit here upright. I'm all the way back. Now it's not bad. So let me remove this hat and then, so if I'm, if I'm sitting upright, I can touch my head slightly with the roof. Uh, but usually that's not how I drive. I kind of slouch a little bit to the right. I do this in all the cars. So with this, it's not a problem. But even if you do sit upright like this, what you can do if you're a taller guy, you can slide slightly down so your knees will go up a little bit and then you'll be fine. And then let me show you what my legs look like in this car. All right, so here's what my legs look like here. I have quite a bit of room here, actually. I know it's a kind of funny video to record this, but you know, I'm not like cramped completely here. Also, you can move your steering forward and then, you know, back a little bit. So like you can pull it out towards yourself more. Um, for some reason that is not working, hold on. Now, here's what my legs look like inside the Mamex 5. It's not bad. I'm not like cramped here, actually, like how I expected it to be. Also, another th adjustment I made, I'll show you, is where you can pull out your steering. So you can go all the way up like this. Man, there's a little spider here. I don't know. Let me remove that. Man, what is this guy doing here? 
All right, this is what my legs look like inside the MX-5. It's actually not bad. I expected it to be a lot more cramped. Another adjustment I did is you can pull the steering all the way out and then, you know, and you usually supposed to be able to fit your fist between your legs. That's for the, you know, safety thing. I can't do it here, but it's kind of like workable solution. And last thing I want to add, as far as the room here sitting, you know, it's actually better than I expected. Now, if you are a bigger guy than me, then you might feel a little bit more cramped. But for me, this is this is enough. So it's definitely not a deal breaker. And first, I'm going to drive Mazda MX-5 in the city. I'm going to put the car in the sport mode, drive, make sure nobody's there, and let's go. All right. And the first and foremost, we're gonna talk about acceleration of Mazda MX-5. Now, as you know, this is a naturally aspirated engine with two liter, 181 horsepower, 151 pound-feet of torque. Now, the first question you may ask, why am I driving an automatic transmission, right? Well, this is the car that was available. Plus, I wanted to see how automatic transmission really is because, for example, if I were to buy this car, my wife would also drive it and she definitely doesn't know how to drive stick. So tell me, what would you do? Would you get automatic transmission and let your spouse drive one? Uh, or would you get a stick shift and teach your spouse or girlfriend to drive a stick shift? Let me know. Now, one more acceleration. Let's go. And you know what? One thing I can tell you, this car does feel quicker than I expected. Obviously, we're dealing here with uh, around 2,400 pounds, so it's very light. Now, it has a little like revving sound. It tries to rev up high, which is really cool, especially you appreciate this on the twister roads. Uh, overall, it's adequate power. For what this car is, for being a complete purist, this car has absolutely adequate power. One more acceleration, coming to the stop sign, and let's go. And there you go. And the car builds power. Yeah, it's overall, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not like a jumpy quick, but it's fairly quick enough to enjoy. Like, like I said, this is not a turbo engine. This is not some crazy high powered heavy motor. This is light and it's quick on its fit. And this is exactly what we like this Mazda MX-5 for. So the, end, uh, the acceleration, I'll say, is adequate for this car. It's not super blazing fast. It is not slow. It is just adequate. Now we come to the brakes. And brakes on this car feel pretty good. They're not like super duper strong, but they are definitely very well engineered for this car. The brake pedal feels kind of soft and nice, gradual. The car does not stop very abruptly and is also not sensitive pedal. So it, it's just a very good feel and it breaks basically as you want it. Like you want to break gradually, it'll break gradually. You want to break quick, it'll, it'll do the job. Uh, so I'm actually pretty pleased with this brakes. And again, the car is light, so it's obviously easier to stop this car. So the brakes feel pretty adequate. And then let's come to the stop. Yes, there are obviously no motions back and forth. So the car stops very solid. And the next thing I want to talk about the steering in this car. And that's where we come to appreciate uh, the sportiness of this pure sports car. What they call it back to basic sports car. The steering in this car is very direct. Uh, obviously, it's, you know, it's electric assist. But it is not electromechanical steering that you'll see on modern Porsches, BMWs, where it's completely numbed. And it's, uh, you know... Uh, synthesized you know basically they try to mimic like a steering by adding vibrations and stuff so this doesn't have any of that on the other hand this is not that typical classic uh, sports steering where you feel every little thing on the steering no it's like it's like it gives you some feedback but it's 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 not like it responds absolutely to everything uh, on the road and a part of that because they want you to enjoy this car they don't want you to like you know get those jolts uh, get those uh, unnecessary feedbacks into your steering they want you to enjoy it as well so 
but in terms of this you know steering ratio it's on the shorter side uh, and it responds really really well literally to all your steering inputs small inputs it just responds to it and now we come to talk about the suspension in this car right and the question that I wanted to answer one of the questions how is it to drive this car in the city and to answer that uh, quite surprising actually now let me tell you right off the bat that this car exceeded my expectations in pretty much all the categories first is being able to fit in this car yes I, I'm able to fit in this car in fact fairly comfortably it's not that I have a lot of room but there's enough room for me in this car to enjoy it and not worry about being cramped now as far as suspension uh, this is a firmer suspension for sure so we're dealing with a firm suspension it's a short travel suspension and when you hit let's say bigger bumps bigger potholes the car does respond with its whole body and that's where you feel that it's like you know quite a firm suspension but on the other hand first of all we have a GT model Grand Touring model with a 45 thick uh, tires which kind of softens the things on the road and at the same time, the suspension is tuned in such a way where it's firm enough to deliver you that feel of a sport car. But at the same time, it does pretty well like compliant work in terms of like how it smoothens out those imperfections on the road. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and drive on uh, you know my favorite Tampa Avenue on the bumpy road and just kind of give you a little bit more detail how it soaks the bumps okay and I'm putting the car in a regular mode whatever it is it, it, there's a sport mode and nothing so I guess it's just a normal mode and here we are my favorite Tampa Avenue hitting all the imperfections on the road thanks to the city for not fixing the road so I can test my cars here and like I said it's very well compliant what happens is it does respond firm but there is a little bit of motion where it kind of glides over the bumps to deliver that little bit of premiumness uh, and how it responds to them. The only thing you'll notice that the car responds with the whole body, right? In most cars, you feel the suspension do the work. Here, it responds with the whole body and then you feel it in your seat. I'm kind of sitting almost like on the rear wheels uh, as well. And I can feel with my back, with my butt, of course, that, you know, suspension is working. This car is gliding over the bumps. And even when you look at your rear view mirror, you can see it like, you know, shivering a little bit. So uh, that kind of tells you that this car is a short platform. It kind of tells you it's a, you know, firm suspension. And then uh, the whole basically platform kind of reacts uh, to all this uh, bumps and potholes. Now, the good news is that it's very stable. It doesn't dance around like in the earlier Hyundai products, Nissan products, what you would see is that they will go over the bumps and then they'll start dancing around or the, the rear will kind of move side to side. So none of that here. It does a pretty good job, even though responding with the body, but at the same time, it soaks all these imperfections pretty well. So the GT model, they really did add that level of comfort. So in my personal test between the club, I haven't driven the club one, but knowing that it has a lower profile tires, uh, most likely I would get, with, uh, get along with a GT model and I'll also discuss why on a twister roads once I take it to the Canyon roads. Uh, also for the level of comfort because of the thicker rubber and the suspension is still tuned on the comfortable side. Uh, now, let's, the next thing I wanna kinda talk about as we start driving here on the red light, all right, there it is, is the transmission. Uh, now, while this automatic transmission is okay, uh, that reminds me transmission I had in the Mazda 3 times ago. It even sounds very similar. Yet, I don't think this is the transmission that should be in this car. I think that Mazda should put dual clutch transmission. I mean, hey, come on. Volkswagen GTI has a dual clutch transmission. Volkswagen Taos has a G uh, dual clutch transmission, SE and SEL trims. Forget about that, my 2023 Volkswagen CC, which is a 10 years old, has a dual clutch transmission. So Mazda, come on, let's put dual clutch transmission in this car and then the automatic will feel right in this car. Uh, what you'll find it, uh, yesterday as I drove on the Twisty Roads, I found that uh, the, this transmission just sometimes finds itself in the wrong gear 
and then you kind of want to overtake it and then of course you know uh, do manual stuff but I know most of you would say get manual and I totally get it you should be getting a manual transmission and if you guys like this video I will bring a manual transmission and discuss more of that engagement in that car as well all right so now that we drove it in the city let me go ahead and take it on the highway and discuss is this a good freeway cruiser and now I'm merging a highway to see what Mazda MX-5 feel like driving on the highway as well as discuss the sound insulation in this car how well insulated this cabin is all right coming to the stoplight and both of us can go let's go all right This car needs a smoke check in front of me okay so it's actually not bad in terms of like joining the on ramps uh, on the freeway it'll scream a lot of course it's a naturally aspirated engine but it's it's very revvy like it's very happy to rev high and I like about that and honestly that's where you're gonna appreciate the manual transmission not the automatic so the first thing I want to talk about is the sound insulation in this cabin and let me tell you this, uh, it is loud. Uh, it is okay loud in a sense. It's not like a premium, well-insulated cabin. Um, I just turned off my AC so I can hear it better. Of course, you can hear stuff around me, but it's not bad. It kind of blends in well with what this car is all about. And this car is all about having fun. It's a sports car and yeah, I can totally go for a long trip so let me measure with my meter what the sound insulation is I'm going let me go 65 let me pass this bat bus all right and here it is it's about 60 oh 71 it's about 71 so it's slightly higher than most of the cars that I usually test. Let me get the AC back on. So, okay, it's not bad, okay? Let me tell you this, it's not bad, it's not overly loud. A good thing I don't hear my tires too much, like I expected to hear a lot more tire noise like you hear in the Prius, the older Prius. No, none of that. It is all normal. You hear a little bit of a sound traveling, uh, you know, somewhere here around the you know edges of the windows. But overall, it's fine. Now, in terms of cruising alone and uh, driving it on the highway, uh, you'll be fine. Uh, it's definitely not a luxury experience, but it's compliant and it does have a level of um, uh, softness in it. So it'll be perfectly fine driving it. It's gonna be a little bit loud, so you can get a little bit tired from the actual noise. Um, because usually a well insulated cabin kind of adds to the you know being more relaxed uh, but nevertheless I can totally go from LA to San Francisco you know stop by by Carmel in the sea enjoy the 17 mile drive uh, just fine so I can totally the cool thing about this car is that it just floats very nicely on the road it's very stable for such a tiny car you don't feel like people are gonna crush you on the freeway like there's no feeling that oh I'm a tiny car oh by the way when you hit those you know lanes on the freeway it makes this like a you know like a racing car when it hits the side it makes that noise it's very cool it's not a beep like screaming at you that hey you know stay in your lane so what I'm trying to say uh, you can feel uh, overall fine driving in a long distance. Um, you know, if, if, you, if you're type of a guy who prefers comfort even more, overly, you want to be overly comfortable, then probably cars like Mustang will be for you. But this is fun. This is so much fun. Even cruising on a freeway is fun. Looking at this sculptured hood, a long hood for this car. And like I said, you don't feel like somebody is going to crush you. You feel very commanding driving this little car. Another cool thing I noticed in this car is that you feel the speed here. I'm driving like 65 and I feel like I'm driving almost 80. Same when I was driving yesterday on the Twister Rose like 40, it felt like I'm driving 60. So you feel speed in this car 
a lot more than in your average car, even like a Hyundai Ioniq 5. Um, so that's another thing I wanted to share. So now, what about overtaking cars in the freeway? What about the mid-range power? So let's quickly look into it. So I'm gonna stay in the comfort mode. So let's say I need to overtake some cars and I have to floor it. Uh, it's okay, I mean, it takes a bit of a time, but it's not bad. Like I said, it's a light car. You know, you can still easily exceed the speed. Um, it holds the speed really well. I mean, man, this car feels so planted. That was the biggest surprise for me. And then, yes, you can overtake cars. It's just gonna rev up more, maybe to 4,500, 5,000 RPM. Uh, it's gonna downshift if you have automatic, uh, but it's perfectly fine overtaking cars in the freeway. All right, so there it is. So now let me go ahead and I'll be recording in the part two of this video and that'll be driving in a twisty roads. So I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think in the comments about the Mazda MX-5 if you have one or you're looking into one and wait for this part two where I'm gonna drive it on a twisty roads.